here we go again. We keep on giving a crack at this. One of these days we'll get this right. One of these days y'all will like, like what I'm having to say. Uh, anyway, the other day I shared with you just who, who the heck K.E. Cannell is. Uh, and I told you about my write, writing feature articles for local community newspapers, having a column titled Cat and Carl Scuttlebutt, and doing a little bit of ghost writing. Of course, I can't tell you about that. That's a whole operative word is ghost on uh, that. So today what I thought I'd do is share with you one of the articles that I wrote. Uh, this one comes from Captain Carl Scuttle, Scuttlebutt, on that. and I think it was probably about 2013, right about there. Anyway, and it's a personal story. It's a personal story. It was one of the most fortunate things I had in my life to do. I got the opportunity to go on the eighth annual jazz cruise with the Sarasota Jazz Club. It was a very, very, very enjoyable and special event. Uh, yeah. The cruiser went to the Caribbean, but that wasn't the thing. What was the thing was, is there were 80 jazz musicians playing 10 different venues, 10 different venues, 10 times a day, each in a different player. There was nothing but jazz the whole time. You'd go just about anywhere in the ship and find some neat combo, piano, jazz horns, or whatever going, going on, and on. It was really very nice. Nice, huh? But one of the things that made it per personally special for me, not the most important one, but one, one, was that I'm an early riser. I get up about 5, 5.30 in the morning. Well, the very first morning on the uh, cruise, I got up and I wandered around and I got myself my cup of coffee and I'm just banging around all pretty much all by yourself. There's hardly anybody else at that time of the morning around. around. And all of a sudden in the Crystal Lounge, I heard the piano playing. So I poked my head in, you know, Stuck my head around the door, and th there on the playing was uh, Rosano Sportiello. He was playing and practicing for all the performances. He did that every single morning. So every single morning, I was a special audience member. I got to watch my own private recital. It was really pretty neat. Now, Rosano is only one of those. Uh, fantastic musicians. I'm going to have to read this because I'll, otherwise I'll get totally lost and I, I can guarantee I'm not going to pronounce half the, half the names properly, but bear with me, bear with me. Featured on vocalists were Bonna Gibson, Ms. Eve and Evans. On trumpet were Warren Varsh, Duke Hediger, and Brian Shaw. Reeds were Alan Vosh, Frank Roberschutten, Nati Sarpia, Bob Draga and Peter again. They laid down some magic. Trombonist Bill Allred and John Allred, they slid right into the jams. They're picking on guitar with John Kakuchi and Howard Alden Nicky Parpa. And Clive Collins provided bass ryth rhythms on it. Now, Rosanna Spotiali, I was tell, already told you a little bit about him on that. He played the piano. Randy Morris, David Bodinger House, and John Bunch, Jack Hanna, Butch Miles, Burt Dogger, and Eddie also. And Eddie also provided, you know, the drums. He was so one drummer sort of floated around among them all on this. Pretty, 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 pretty impressive group of people, but not the most impressive group of this whole thing. What really made it special was that Sven Asmussen and his wife, Ellen, joined the cruise. They are members of the Sarasota Jazz Club. And uh, Sven is a sort of spe special person. I'm going to have to read this again to you. Now, you look at this name. That's S-V-E-N-D. Last name S-A-M-U-S-S-E-N. Look it up on Google and you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, here's what it says. The real highlight was through having the jazz club member Sven Asmussen and his wife Ellen joining our group for the cruise. Asmussen is one of the finest little-known jazz violinists in the world, and that's a fact. I know that for a fact. He also has a much storied life in jazz. That's true also. He and Ellen Hill from Denmark and now make their residence in Sarasota. 
Over his many years, he had performed for many jazz with many jazz celebrities. In 1967, he joined with Ray Nance and Jean-Luc Ponte at the Monterey Jazz Festival Violin Summit. What makes him special today, though, is in, nine, in 2013, he was 92 years old. Now that's, per, that's pretty neat. And I sure heck hope I make it that far on it there. But anyway, I hope he's still around. During the cruise, he par particularly awaited to join in jams. But, I bet you can't guess, he spent the whole cruise, he and Ellen, negotiating with the onboard musicians who are union mu mu musicians, his ability to play. Uh, they finally did get it all settled. And the last night of the cruise in the Palm Court was his opportunity. We were all in there. I was sitting by the window enjoying my go goose on ice and all that. He and Ellen were sitting over by the bar, the bar table over there. Yeah, quartet, they played their first set, set, and then they broke. And up uh, stood Sven. Ellen grabbed his violin case and amp. She headed ahead, got up on the stage, set up the amp, got the violin out of the case, set it on the stand, adjusted the mic, went all the way back to the table. Look at Sven hadn't made it very far from the table. Helped him all the way back to the stage, up the six inch riser, all six inches up onto the stage. Toddled over to the uh, microphone, picked up the violin with her help, put it under his chin. The musicians came back, they all got ready, they started in, and then all of a sudden he started to play. And it was almost like uh, ghosts flying by. 30 years disappeared. Here was a man that was 30 years younger. I mean, he, he could, he about, about 60 years old, if not younger, playing the violin. I mean, it was fantastic. For 45 minutes it went on like that. Then when it ended, he put down the violin. Ellen got back up on the stage, took his hand, helped him down off the stage, and he toddled all the way back to the table and she sat him down. Then she went back and picked up the violin and in. The whole time that was going on, everybody that was there was applauding and cheering. It was the most fantastic scene I have ever, ever seen. Anyway, that's one of the stories that I have and I'll be sharing more along the way. Matter of fact, on that same cruise, You'll be hearing later on in book three of Scuttlebutt from Scuppernong Cove, which is tentatively titled Sultry Days on the Cove. You'll be hearing about Loopy, Floor, and the La Fiesta del Rio. I'm not going to tell you about it because it's going to be in the book, but I guarantee you it was one heck of a sight to see the real thing. Anyway, until next time, fair winds, smooth seas, happy landings. K.E. Canal, I told my friends like you, Carl.